If you haven't figured it out yet, it's campaign season, and the next two ladies we're going to talk to are very, very busy. We're going to welcome Ro Kendall and Pat McConey um, to the program from the Republican Club. Thanks for joining us, guys. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Thank Michael. You. So this is a crazy kind of time of year. You guys are, are you getting inundated from candidates that want to come by and say hello and speak to your folks? I imagine you have some full schedules. We do, and we're picking the ones that we think that our, our, that our voters in the village need to see and haven't really heard from. Last month we had our, our candidate, uh, Denise Gary Pandolf. We had her right here yep, on the show. We, yeah. That's right, you did. You did, and you guys did a great job for her. And now we're going to have Eric Early. Eric and Early is Eric, coming up February 2nd, Yep, right? February 2nd. And he's running for Senate as well. Yes, so, yes. There's and, several in the Senate, as we know. There's right, lots right. of candidates. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the challenges, I guess, would be for Eric. It's a state. Well, I talked to Denise about that, too. It's, it's a giant state. And you're running a statewide campaign, and it's that name recognition. Who is Eric Early, and what's he all yeah. about, and, and getting that message out there. So tell us a little bit about Eric, what you know about him. You know, I think I'll talk about oh, Eric, because sure. we, we kind of split this up. But <laughs> Eric, um, you're right. You quiet asked me about quiet, quiet, quiet over there. Quiet over there. Quiet over there. Going to get you in a minute, uh, bro. No, we're just Same splitting here. up the talking points. So, um, Eric Early, uh, he is an America First candidate. He is. He's a little bit more well known than Denise was initially on because Eric ran for Attorney General. Right. In the 2022 election. But he's not a politics guy. He's no, not coming no, from as isn't. a mayor or, or state senator or those kinds no, of things. No, he isn't. He's he's a, he's a businessman, family man. He is 30 years in a reputable law firm, so he wants to bring more of a non-politician um, presence to, to Washington, D.C. And he, he is America First candidate, what we call yeah. America First, and um, so he's running on that. I've met him a couple times, and I've heard him speak, and he's sincere, he's bright, he's, he's articulate, and he's very, people want to see, what do they, they call him, authentic. Okay. So we'll see. You know, we, Michael, we just want our villagers to have a sense. We want them to see. And right. Meet it's great them. that because you, because it's you know they, they can't really and these candidates you know unfortunately they're polling a little lower and they're not getting the support financially. Right. Uh, people aren't pouring yes. money into these kind of races because of the fact we have that kind of plurality kind of race that for the general for the for the primary. So yes. Um, Ro, what do you think is the important part of any of these candidates that are coming around uh, in, in terms of their messaging? Because maybe they know they're they don't have a genuine chance at. At, you know, being one of the second place candidates for Senate, but but it's important for them to maybe get that go meet folks up and down the state and for future political offices or future opportunities. I think I think that's very valid. They they really want to get out there. Mm -hmm. As you know, with Denise, she took the time to uh, air some spots on our on our station. Um, she's she's been around Washington a long time, mm -hmm. but in California, she's not well known. But right. she is fantastic. I'd love to have her. Uh, in there, she really represents, you know, our values. I think. Yeah. Do some of these candidates kind of use these things as like a, a way to kind of test, test, flight their balloon of, of their their issues and that kind of thing, see what's working, see what isn't, and then maybe have you seen like maybe they go for another kind of office somewhere else that's maybe more possibly. Uh, a, a, a possible. Yeah. yeah. Possibly. I, possibly. <laughs> they don't let us in on their. Plans. They don't let us in. Oh, no. In the past, maybe no. I thought maybe you've seen that from other no. candidates and those kind of things. Um, talk a little bit about the, some of the local candidates too. This is a, mm. yet another great opportunity because the, talk about you know not being able to get great funding and you know big campaign war chests. These opportunities for uh, for someone like uh, uh, running for judge Whitney Bukowski. Uh, yes. She's yeah. she's coming in. She's Bukowski. Sorry about that, but she's coming in and she's running for. I don't even know her name. She, she needs to get out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rose, come well, she's um, she's an assistant. She's a senior assistant DA. Right. She's in the DA's office for a number of years. And mm -hmm. she is uh, she she recently just came to fame or, or notice, I would say, through that horrible shooting that they had on 55, where that little five-year-old boy through mm -hmm. road ra road mm -hmm. rage right. was killed mm -hmm. and. It was a horrible uh, thing. No one knew for a week who did it, but she is the one who led that and and uh, worked with the investigators and then brought it and and, and convicted the guy. Mm -hmm. So that's what really pumped her up. But she's a very strong uh, family values, and her most recent uh, assignments were in family abuse, or family law, elder abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think she fits right in with what we want to see. You know, being helped. Yeah, and a lot of prosecutors do move on to become either a DA or the DA route, so that kind of thing, yeah. or in the in uh, go for the open uh, judicial seats. 
And even though they're nonpartisan, um, oftentimes it's usually a very conservative kind of slant when you come from the prosecutor's office, right. and that, it's no yes. exception for her, right? She has a right. quite the track record in terms of her, 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 her she mm -hmm. was in the sexual assault unit, like you yes. said, she had that murder trial. And so um, what do you think voters look for when they're looking for a judge? Is it, is it that kind of tough on crime kind of thing? I would say. Yeah. I mean, I know Sheriff Barnes, our sheriff, sure. our wonderful sheriff in this county. He he um, totes his hat to the fact that he is keeping he 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 is has consequences for criminals. He puts them in jail, and he's hard on crime. Mm -hmm. So we need that because with our open borders and all we all these people pouring in our country, people are seeing more. We're seeing crime tick up. So I think it's more important than ever that we get some people tough on crime. Mm -hmm. And I, her mission statement also says that her top priority is to have public access to an equal justice system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's really important. People are losing faith in our justice system. It does seem mm -hmm. to be a little bit... Yeah, I can feel, it can feel out of balance for folks who are either on one side of whichever way the scale happens to be tipping. That's most certainly. Um, and when, you, when we say equal access, what do you think? She, what do you think she can do as a as a you know, superior court judge in terms of getting that kind of a message through? As a, as a again, the scales of justice, she doesn't want to tilt one way or the other. But what what can a, a judge do in those areas? Well, I think they have that. She's they have to be principled. Mm -hmm. and they have to believe in what they're doing, and they have to have that firm believe in our constitution. That that's she takes an oath. She'll right. take an oath to uphold, uphold that. And I think that will be her, her um, right. equal justice mission. under yeah, the law. Yeah, okay. and give everyone. Let's talk a little bit about the club and what you guys have been doing. I, I know this is, like you say, this is a real busy political candidate yeah. type of season. What do you hope that the members and the, and the folks who come to these meetings are going to get from the next, you know, all the way to November that you guys are presenting here? I think we really want to raise, <clears throat> raise awareness mm -hmm. for the candidates and what they stand for. And just to introduce them, and a lot of them aren't as well known as the big heads in uh, right. Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So that's just our way of introducing them and, and making them a little bit better known. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, our main goal, too, is to get out the vote, as it is for our friends yes. on, on the Democratic side. You know, the, the primary elections are not, they don't bring out as many people. So they don't really so turn it out. It's, it's the, those, are the, those are the true folks who yes. are they're, they're involved yes. and engaged. But yes. yeah, for the generals, when you want that registration to kind of amp up a yes, little bit. Right. Yes. And what we have a little challenge because when people can register to vote, Michael, at the DMV, if they didn't check a box for their party, they automatically go into the no party preference. And there was an article in our Globe about it explaining it to people. So one of our challenges this month is to make sure all of our eligible voters, independent and Republican, are have the opportunity to vote and that they get the right, right ballots. So if they want to vote in the presidential elect primary, they have to be registered Republican if they want to vote Republican. Right, right. They're automatic. The Democrats are all set. They can, you know, they don't have to. Uh, years ago, Arnold Schwarzenegger changed that rule. You probably know about no, that. No, no, yeah. And uh, we closed our our primaries for just Republicans. I wish he kept it no party mm -hmm. preference. I mean, talk mm -hmm. about having it open and. Having equal. <laughs> yeah, I think people are probably surprised by that when they go yeah. in there and they and they're they're not a registered Republican and but they want to jump over there and maybe support a candidate yeah. like that, right? Yes. So now we hope everyone will go to ocvote.com and check their status. Mm -hmm. And if they're not right. registered Republican, if like I said, if Democrats are okay, but they've <laughs> got to go and say and re-register. And right. they can always go back and sure. say, I, if I want to be independent or, you know, no party preference. Check know. that box. And make yeah. sure you get registered. And make sure you obviously a great, obviously a good time also to make sure your status is, hasn't changed. You haven't been purged from the, from the rolls for some, yes. for, for some exactly. reason. Because those things do happen every 10 or so years. They go through there and see if there's dormant, dormant accounts in there. Somebody's passed away and those kinds of things. Exactly. Exactly. So we have one other candidate I want to talk about, Casey McKeon, um, Central yeah. Committee yes. for the Republican Party. Right. Now, most folks have no idea what the Central Committee is and does, but it's really an integral part of what happens here in Orange County yes. in terms of the Republican Party, right? It is, Michael. And every we have, um, I think it's nine districts, ten districts. And mm -hmm. in each of those districts, we can have six representatives from a party. The, the, the Democrats have six, and the Republicans have six. So what's happened is a lot of people feel that they want more conservative conservative America first policies being represented in our Orange County government, GOP. Mm -hmm. And they feel that there's a lot of more establishment, more, you know, uh, non, uh, less conservative. So Casey McCune is a, he's a current Huntington Beach City Council member. 
and he's doing a great job. I met him the other night. He's a great guy. Right. He's a young guy. He's about 40 years old, and he's got a lot of energy. They just actually were able to take over mm -hmm. the Huntington Beach Council, and they're totally revamping Huntington Beach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, for the folks who don't exactly know what the Central Committee does, yeah. they don't really hold any office in terms of that, but they're kind of the, the I don't know what to say, the kingmakers in terms of that, but they'll, they'll, they'll gather, they'll say, okay, who's, who, what candidates do we want to put on a mailer? What candidates are we going to yes. try to help fundraise for and, and set our agenda around? So it's really a, a, a good explanation. A good, it's Thank a good you. role. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an important role in the party, even though most people don't realize what it is. So you guys are looking, yes. uh, on the Republican side, you're looking for folks who are going to continue to kind of the toe of the party line and, and, and whatever the, the, the campaign says, we're we're going in this direction in terms of the direction of the party. You said that beautifully, and <laughs> we're gonna well, thank you. And we're gonna have we're gonna have him and maybe another Gracie Vandermark is also running and with three candidates. So you know, like I said, I think we're our our people. You asked before about what we want to help our people do. We want to help awareness. We want to encourage them to get out and vote, and and, and um, equip them to make the best decisions. Sounds like a good idea. Rowan Pat from the Republican Club here in the Village, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. You're watching This Day. We'll be right back. <laughs>